tonight on Crossfire. Is President Obama surrendering to Iran? Will his new deal slow its push for nuclear weapons? Tough talk and bluster may be the easy thing to do politically, but it's not the right thing for our security. Should the U.S. ease up on sanctions? Is it putting Israel in danger? It's a historic mistake. On the left, Van Jones. On the right, Newt Gingrich. In the crossfire, Trita Parsi, who supports the newly announced agreement, and Cliff May, who doesn't. Is the president making peace or getting fooled? Tonight on Crossfire. Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Van Jones on the left. I'm Newt Gingrich on the right. In the crossfire tonight, two guests who come down on different sides of the Iran nuclear deal. My view is very simple. This is surrender to the Iranians. It's an exact parallel to what happened with North Korea when the State Department team was duped, patted themselves on the back all the way to the Koreans' nuclear explosion. Today, both Saudi Arabia and the Israelis, who never agree on anything, are remarkably close, calling this a stupid deal. Apparently, the same people who told the president the Obamacare website would work told him this was a good deal. Well, look, first of all, there's a big difference between this and the North Korea deal. The, the two I words, first of all, Israel was not looking right down the, uh, the, the barrel and saying no way. And the, number two, inspectors on the ground. And I think that's something, something we have not talked about enough. We're spending uh, uh, some time on this show talking about how we get inspectors on the ground so we can know what's going on. We didn't have that in North Korea. So in the crossfire at night, we have Trita Parsi, who's the author of A Single Roll of the Dice, Obama's Diplomacy with Iran. And we have Cliff May, who is the president of the Foundation for the Defense of the Democracy. So we're going to start with you, sir. Um, I don't understand why people uh, like you are not happy about this deal. This is a good deal. First of all, we're going to keep $100 billion of the Iranians' money locked under a key. We give them $4 billion bucks back and get a chance to put inspectors on the ground. Why is that by itself not a good deal? Well, there have been inspectors on the ground for a long time. The question is what they have been allowed to see and what they will be allowed to see in the future. The problem is with this deal is it's meant to stop this particular regime from acquiring nuclear weapons. And as I, th I think quite, quite properly Newt says, the negotiations with North Korea went along a similar path. Various things were given. At the end of the day, the North Koreans tested a nuclear weapon once, twice, three times, and are still developing missiles. To missiles. The Iranians will be able to do the same thing here. Despite this agreement, or this joint action plan, as it's called, the Iranian program proceeds towards development of a nuclear weapon, Let and our leverage question. is diminished. Is, is your view that we should have no interim deal, no interim step, that somehow that these sanctions, and we have the most crippling, President Obama has put the most crippling set of sanctions on any country in modern history, Indeed. and they are still, they have gone under sanctions from 200 to 19,000 centrifuges. Is it your view that we should go from sanctions to total surrender from the Iranians with no interim deal at all? No, I any think interim deal surrender? No, I think you're right, man. There should be an interim deal. It just should have been a better interim deal than this. My fear is, and it's not just my fear, is that the sanctions wall, we're now kind of removing a brick or two and the whole thing could collapse. In fact, the Iranian regime is saying the sanctions wall now will collapse and it will collapse as the Iranians continue to move ahead. They are still enriching uranium, keeping enriching uranium. The plutonium reactor at Iraq, that's not going to be dismantled. I They're agree. moving ahead towards a nuclear weapon and that's what we don't want. Let me, let, me, Trita, let, let me explain for a second with a picture why so many Americans, I think, are very cautious about this dictatorship. It goes all the way back to uh, 34 years ago, the uh, taking of the American embassy, which was a clearly illegal act, sanctioned by the mullahs, only carried out by the mullahs, over 400 days of illegally holding Americans now hostage. Now, here, here on a weekend where you would think if they had any self-discipline, the Iranians would have played meek, nice, civilized. Three examples. The foreign minister says... We have won the right to enrich. Remember, every single UN Security Council resolution said they had to quit enriching. They now interpret the agreement as we've won the right to enrich. Second, President Rouhani, the so-called moderate, although he's handpicked by the dictatorship, says this is a great victory for Iran. As you just suggested, uh, Cliff, the sanctions wall will now collapse. But the most amazing thing, in a regime which currently has an American pastor locked up for a year for preaching Christianity in a regime which just arrested a whole group of people for having had communion. I mean, a, a deliberately vicious regime in many ways. You have the real dictator, Khamenei, saying over the weekend in a speech, 
that the Israelis are rabid dogs, the Americans are our enemies. Now, why should any American trust a dictatorship that is openly telling us with contempt that they fully plan to break this agreement? Well, all you've done here is to repeat the problem. You've not presented any solution. There's no doubt that this regime in Iran is a regime that is not popular with the people in any way, shape, or form. The question is, how do you deal with this issue? The approach of just pursuing sanctions, absolutely no diplomacy, has seen the Iranian nuclear program go from 164 centrifuges to 19,000. Clearly not a successful track record. This deal, for the first time ever since 2003, freezes the nuclear program. And part of the reason why it cannot be a repeat of what happened in North Korea is because within the next six months, they're going to eliminate their stockpile of 20% enriched uranium. As long as they don't have 20% enriched uranium, as long as they can't go back to 20%, they cannot build a bomb. Let me, let me ask you a question. I do, I'm, I'm curious to know your answer. The, this regime didn't, says it is not going to build nuclear weapons. That's part of this agreement. This regime says they have never had a nuclear weapons program. Do you believe this regime has never had a nuclear weapons program, or do you agree with me that this regime has been lying? This regime has been lying about some of these things, but here's the deal. Have they been lying oh, about uh, having a nuclear weapons here's program? The deal, here's the deal. Can I just get that and answer clearly on that one? I believe that prior to 2003, they did things that are illegal and that had clear weapons dimensions. Okay. Now, here's the issue. And you though. think they stopped in 2003 well, your, for, for your, good? Your questioning is leading to the idea that we have to trust them. That is not the case. Well, yeah, I'm glad you're, no, no, I'm no, no, glad no. you're agreeing on that. Well, we, we, have, have we have to, to verify. Do, we have to have a mechanism to verify that they are not cheating on what they're saying they're going to do, and I, I, that this will detect them so quickly so that we can do something about it. This is why this is a good deal. We will get unprecedented inspections in Iraq in the next six months. They did not sign and the additional accord which would allow for on-demand exactly inspections. Why we have that to, should have been part of the deal, and then it would have been a better deal. Well, that's exactly why we have to take this to the second phase. And in the second phase, if no one sabotages it, which unfortunately there is a risk that people in the city will sabotage it to you. We will get to the second phase, and in that second phase, the Iranians will have to sign the additional protocol. They have already indicated that that will take place. And in that phase, that's where the real sanctions really will so, so come let me, in. Let me ask you a question. That's when this gets resolved. Let me, let me ask you a question, because I think you've posed a legitimate idea. I don't totally agree with it, but it's at least legitimate. So if, in fact, after six months, they do not accept intrusive inspections, they only allow basically shadow inspections, would you then be prepared to say this deal has fallen through and we have to follow a very different strategy because they're clearly not complying? What the deal says is that in the next six months, they're going to, have, they're going to negotiate what the end game is. They have decided some of the parameters of that end game, but the rest of it is up for negotiation, including what the Iranians claim that they already have, which is this right to enrich. The reason why it has to go into these different phases is because after 34 years of mistrust and because of the complexity of this issue, it is completely unrealistic to expect that this entire issue could have been resolved over one weekend in Geneva. They had to divide it into two phases. Now, mindful of the inspections regime that is in place, and I think it's important to remind viewers that the Iranian nuclear program is the most inspected program according to the IEA right now. They spend more time inspecting that program than any other program. But they are denied access to important facilities such as Parchin, sure, where, I, uh, such as, as, such as Fordham. Which is why we have to get the deal so we right. get access so to we, it. Uh, That's but, the point. Look, listen, we do have one. You can't just repeat listen, the we have problem agreement on that when and some, think that uh, you're uh, actually providing a solution. We have agreement on this, and I guess you do too. That is that the Iranians do have a nuclear weapons program, yes, they that they have lied about it, and they continue yeah. to lie about it and that we need more intrusive inspections and all if we're going to Abs we, get, get. we absolutely do but my Good. but my point is that we that you can't start at the end of the negotiation and i think people actually don't understand the reality here iran is close to having a nuclear bomb that is the big picture you know, yesterday was not perfect and today i think it's better when we come back i want to ask you cliff why at a moment when war and peace is once again in the balance you want to keep undermining this president <laughs> Welcome back. In the crossfire tonight, we've got Trita Parsi and Cliff May. In a huge deal this weekend, Iran finally agreed to put its nuclear program on hold for six months to allow for negotiations. In return, the Iranians get a slight easing on the economic sanctions. Today, President Obama took on his critics who don't like this deal. We cannot close the door on diplomacy. 
and we cannot rule out peaceful solutions to the world's problems. We cannot commit ourselves to an endless cycle of conflict. And tough talk and bluster may be the easy thing to do politically, but it's not the right thing for our security. Well, look, we are at a critical crossroads here. I am so glad to see the president sounding sober, measured. Iran is not going to feel safe until it gets a nuclear bomb. We're not going to feel safe if they do get a nuclear bomb. That's called irreconcilable differences. We are down to three moves left. Either we bomb them now, we apply tougher sanctions, even though sanctions haven't been working, or we negotiate under a freeze. That is what this president is trying to do. I think it's time the president's critics stop undercutting him and give him a chance to avoid another war. Now, to you, I, do, I think the American people are a little bit smarter than maybe the people here in Washington, D.C., who would love to beat this president up. I want, if you look at these numbers, the American people actually like this deal. 56% of them are in favor. I don't understand from the people who are criticizing this president, who are beating up on this president, what is your alternative besides war to a negotiated settlement here? Well, one thing, the sanctions, which you say didn't work, are, I believe, what has brought Iran to the table to negotiate in the first place. Do you not think that's the case, Van? I, I, listen, I, they, they brought them to the okay, table, so but at the same time, they've been building centrifuges after centrifuges yeah. with the right. sanctions so still in sanctions, place. So sanctions is what has allowed diplomacy to operate. If there were not been sanctions, we wouldn't be having these negotiations. Now, I want this president or any president to have the maximum leverage when he sits down or when his representatives sit down for negotiations. You get maximum leverage when you have maximum sanctions. What bothers me now is a week ago we were at the state of maximum leverage because the sanctions were strongest and more sanctions would allow the President and Secretary of State John Kerry to say, look, I want to ease up on whoa, you, whoa, whoa, but whoa, I need whoa, some whoa, real whoa, whoa, concessions. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, what? Well, you, you were against sanctions, sanctions and we wouldn't no. have negotiations. Hey, listen, I, were you for the, sanctions or against What more is not the sanctions that brought what this about? In that, case, you can, do? in that case, you can say that 19,000 Iranian centrifuges brought the Americans to the table. It's not that simple. <laughs> right. and what, happened here, Amer no, no, what happened here is that the Iranian people went to the polls and they realized that this regime could not cheat in the elections twice in a row and as a result they decided against all odds to still go and vote even though what happened last time where they got beaten up on the streets so badly by this regime and they forced their will onto the regime and they brought into a team who 10 years ago, before Ahmadinejad got into power, was actually pursuing the same path. They offered a deal in 2005 to cap their enrichment capacity at 3,000 centrifuges. We declined that. The Europeans declined that because back then the Bush administration was pursuing the approach that you are advocating right now. Let me, let me, and as a let result me just respond. Now, because I know they work. They I, have 19,000 centrifuges. I, I understand this concept that is very popular that Rouhani is a moderate. I think he is a pragmatist and I think he's a very good negotiator. But keep in mind, as recently as this year, Rouhani said that death to America is not just a wonderful slogan that unites Iranians, it is something that must be acted upon. And last week, as you know, the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who is Rouhani's boss, made a speech to the Basij and to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps in which he was ferociously anti-American. So I just want to They're caution. They're anti-American and as a result you want to bomb them? What uh, is your solution? Our so just our being able to repeat a lot of their our rhetoric solution doesn't is not, bring an end to Our the solution conflict. is not surrender. I want the maximum possible leverage surrender. until we get the Iranians to stop their nuclear There's weapons program. There's one thing that's very important about this. Which you say you agree with. There's you want the Iranians to stop their nuclear weapons program, don't you? Do you or do you not? It would not? be a disaster if the Iranians get a nuclear weapon. Okay, that's great. Unfortunately, you say the they, strategy that you're you, advocating you say, has brought them much closer I, to it I, than I anything don't think else. And now you say the Iranians want a are afraid not to have a nuclear weapon. Do you really think that, or do you think what, what the Iranians want is to be dominant in the Middle East? I think to be the they are the leading sponsors of terrorism in the world. They want to they want to have that a shield for that, no, and they want to oppress their own people. That. Nobody's arguing with you about that. But okay. here's the thing: you have these fantasy mythological solutions. Tougher sanctions. What tougher sanctions can we possibly? Have. Do you want to have a food and medicine embargo? No, and, there without, never has been, and we don't without, want that. Without to losing never China, that. without losing Russia, without losing India, what more sanctions can we do? We have maximized there is sanctions a bill, pressure. There is a bill that passed on a bipartisan basis in the House for tougher sanctions, a bipartisan basis. It would pass on a bipartisan basis as well in the Senate. Senator and Menendez, a Democrat from your party, this deal gives away too much, gets too little. This is important to understand. This has been a game of chicken in which both sides have escalated. 
The Iranians, however, have one last card to play. And to believe that they're going to capitulate because of the sanctions pain without using that last card is a fantasy. Let me ask what is that last card? That last card is actually they would weaponize. The day well, of and nothing in this agreement stops weaponization, does it? That you're arguing for is that they would not only go from 19,000 centrifuges, but they would actually test A real question for That's you. That's why you we imagine, have to have diplomacy. Can you imagine the Supreme Leader actually not having nuclear weapons, giving up that program? Can you imagine Absolutely, that? I can imagine that. I think the problem. The basis of the revolution in '79 was anti-Americanism and to dominate well, the Middle East. The basis of the revolution was not to get a nuclear bomb. Let, let me let me ask you a question though, because uh, I'm I'm fascinated, and you obviously have studied this and think about it a lot. Why would Khamenei give a speech last week that was that viciously anti-Israeli? I mean, I mean, describing people as rabid dogs is pretty close to the edge. And that viciously anti-American, what is his internal need as a, as a dictator in terms of balancing power in the country? That, that at that moment in time, knowing that they're going to be negotiating in Geneva, he felt he had to go and be this viciously anti-American. There were a couple of lines in his speech I think were the key messages. He set out a couple of red lines, which was actually a message to his negotiators, while at the same time a message to the people on the other side. And I think they were doing that to strengthening their bargaining cards in the negotiations. I was in Geneva. I could see the dynamic that was taking place. This is a very tough negotiation. Part of the problem with the attitude of thinking that we can just dictate the terms is because that's a misread of the amount of power the United States has vis-a-vis -vis Iran. If it was that simple, this issue would have been resolved 15 years ago, and the Iranians would not have 19,000 since. Let me, 19, let, let me add something yeah, in, in your sure, response. Yeah. You know, all the pundits, all the, the politicians that are on TV saying it's a terrible thing, Brent Scrocroft says this is, a good, this is a good deal, good interim step. Brzezinski, Anthony Zinni, all the actual people who understand what's going on, the senior uh, uh, security officials, they're saying, yeah, 70 of them saying this is a good, sensible interim step. So I, at what point do we give this president the opportunity to be president of the United States and lead, give him the six months? At the end of these six months, if the Iranians are doing terrible stuff, we can, we can go back to the sanctions we already had, the ones you want, military action. Why not give him six months? He's got the six months. That, that's the reality of the thing. He now does have six months to get a better agreement. This joint, this, this plan, which is all it is, it's not a treaty, it doesn't go very far. Over the next six months, he can get something different. If he's as tough as treated just described, the supreme leader being. I think she is exactly right. The supreme leader was sending a tough message saying I can be anti-American, I can continue to threaten Israel, and the Americans will still go along. He was being tough. I think th uh, this president should be just as tough. I hope he will be, and I will support him in that if he's tough and he understands that the goal here is not to kick the can down the road. The goal is to keep this regime this regime from having nuclear weapons because once it does, it'll be an inflection moment in history in a very dangerous let me, century. Let me just ask you all to stay here. Next, we'll have the final question for our guest. We also want you at home to weigh in on today's fire back question. Do you think the nuclear deal with Iran is progress or surrender for the U.S.? Reply now by tweeting progress or surrender using the hashtag crossfire. We'll have the results after the break. Now we're back with Trita Parsi and Cliff May. And it's time for the final question. I, I, you're an optimist, you have hope, etc. But let me ask you, if there's a final point here, and you're right, diplomacy may not work. What would you do to stop the Iranians if, in fact, in the end, they're determined to get a bomb? You know what? When you invest in diplomacy, you've got to really invest in it. No one asks the question, if you go to war and it doesn't work, what do you do then? Because we are committed to plan A. Plan A is now diplomacy, and we got to make everything possible, every effort to make sure that it's a success. If it's a failure, we'll question. talk about it later on. No, no, but At I'm this point, point are every you effort to has to be made to make sure that this is resolved peacefully for a very simple reason. The United States has had a war in Iraq, a war in Afghanistan. The population is really tired of war, right. and that's why we got to so, make sure that so diplomacy So if diplomacy succeeds. fails, would you accept an Iranian nuclear weapon? If diplomacy fails... Um, I think at that point we have to look at all of the different options very carefully. But I actually believe that diplomacy is going to succeed because I'm seeing a political will on both sides for a very simple reality. Both sides know that if it fails, both sides are worse off. And that's why you have the president leading this so strongly and, and uh, uh, effectively right now. Well, uh, final question, question for you. Uh, you have a president who now has three countries. Uh, Russia, he's done a weapons of mass destruction deal with them. They're backing off on nukes. 
Uh, you've got uh, uh, Syria, chemical weapons, and now possibly Iran. He's held together this incredible coalition just this past week. He pulled, you know, the Security Council of Germany. Are you willing to give this president any credit at all for the role he's playing in trying to bring peace to this world? I'm going to give him support, but not credit. Syria is a terrible mess. We've seen over 100,000 people killed. The Assad regime is more in, 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 is doing better than ever because of this chemical weapons deal. And we haven't gotten the chemical weapons out, so I can't give him high marks on that. Russia, the reset hasn't worked. Vladimir Putin sees the diminishment so no of American strength as in his interest. He has not been cooperative on almost anything, certainly not on, on Iran. No, I, I want to... What about, what about the cold? coalition that, that has gotten Iran to this point, do you give him credit for that? He put together a, a world-class coalition, including Russia and China. Do you give him credit for that? We've gotten to the point where we have an interim deal that is not good. I hope it will become a better deal over the months ahead. <laughs> well, at least you can't say I didn't try to give I you can't say you didn't try. <laughs> and you tr I always try. try. I, always I give try. you credit. That's I give good. you credit. Well, that's good. Well, thank you. <laughs> good. I, I'm the diplomat. <laughs> I want to give a, a big thank you to uh, both to Trita and to Cliff. You can still be a part of this conversation. Go to Facebook. Go to Twitter. Weigh in on our fireback question. Do you think the nuclear deal with Iran is progress for the U.S. or surrender? Right now, 54% of you say progress, 46% of you say surrender. The debate will continue online at CNN.com uh, slash Crossfire, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. From the left, I'm Van Jones. From the right, I'm Newt Gingrich. Join us tomorrow for another edition of Crossfire. Aaron Burnett out front starts right now.